It's also reporting that we have tonight regarding the Secret Service that I find incredibly uh, kind of impossible to understand. There's word of deleted text messages from on and around January 6th. What, can you explain what you know about this? Yeah, and uh, what's interesting about this, Anderson, and uh, Jamie Gangel, Zachary Cohen, and I were able to put this story together. This is comes from a letter that was sent to the uh, to the department, or I should say, the committees uh, dealing with homeland security in both the House and Senate, from the Inspector General of the Department of Homeland Security. Department of Homeland Security is a subsidiary, or the Secret Service is a subsidiary of the Department of Homeland Security. And what the IG is saying is that they had asked the Secret Service to not only preserve but hand over text messages from agents on both January 5th and January 6th, and according to the IG, after that request was made, that the Secret Service went, underwent what they said was a device replacement program, and over the course of that replacement program, all of these text messages were deleted. Now, the committee finds that to be a problem, the Homeland Security Committee, of which Benny Thompson is the chairman of, in addition to being the January 6th committee chairman. We have a statement tonight from Gary Peters, who is the Senate chairman uh, of the Homeland Security Committee, who's also concerned about it. A Secret Service has pushed back on it a little bit. They have said not completely or on the record, that the IG's perception of this is not 100% right, but they have yet to back up their claims as to why. The issue, though, here, Anderson, is that this is information that these committees have been looking for for more than a year and a half. They're just now finding out that this information doesn't exist. That is a big problem among many other problems associated with this, and it just makes trying to figure out the information that these committees, these various different organizations that are investigating what happened here on January 6th, it just makes that job that more difficult. Well, I mean, it, yeah, it raises all sorts of questions about the credibility of the Secret Service, which is, you know, uh, stunning. I mean, I, I, I don't understand on such a con consequential day in history how, how anybody in the Secret Service or anywhere in a national security establishment thinks it's a good idea to delete the text messages detailing what was going on in the inner circle of the White House that day. I, I, that boggles the mind, doesn't it? Yeah, it, I think it does. And and Secret Service, you know, they have, you know, begun the process of reaching out to the media to respond to this letter. You know, we are told that it came as a surprise to them, that they did not expect to see it. Uh, and they they do believe that they have an explanation for exactly what you're talking about, Anderson. We have not been given that explanation yet, uh, but they they... They say that there is an easy way to uh, allow us to understand exactly what happened here. So we should give them the benefit of the doubt. They haven't had the chance to completely respond to this. But you're right. And, and you know, in, in total, there's been a lot of questions about the Secret Service, the role they played uh, in terms of what happened on January 6th with the former president and the former vice president. Uh, and so all of these things are questions that the committee has that they want answers to. And again, when you don't have all the information, it makes it that much harder to paint the entire picture that they want to paint for the American people. Yeah, Ryan Noble, really appreciate your reporting as always. Thank you. Joining us now is CNN contributor, former Nixon White House Counsel John Dean, CNN National Security Analyst Julia Kayyem, former U.S. Assistant Secretary for Homeland Security, which oversees the Secret Service, CNN Senior Law Enforcement Analyst Andrew McCabe, former Deputy Director of the FBI, and CNN Law Enforcement Analyst Jonathan Wackrow, a former Secret Service agent. Jonathan, I got to start with you. Um, first of all, just on the text messages, I, again, I, I guess Ryan Noble says we haven't, the Secret Service says they have some sort of explanation. I don't think that explanation is, oh, the text messages actually weren't erased. It seems like they were, but they have an explanation why. Does it, does that, I mean, is this normal? I, this it makes sense it, to you? It, no, it, it, it's not, Anderson. And listen, first of all, this is a big embarrassment for the Secret Service. One, that they were caught off guard that this letter was being sent and the fact that they didn't have the ability to you know, quickly respond to it. But I have a lot of questions for both DHS, the Inspector General, and the Secret Service. First, the Inspector General uh, stated that many text messages were erased as part of this you know, technology upgrade. I want the word many uh, quantified because what I'm hearing from sources at the Secret Service was that the request for uh, information in text messages from 20 key agents that were involved in January 6th were received, uh, you know, by, uh, received by DHS Inspector General. So I want to actually know, you know, is missing text messages a material part of a material um, fact in the their investigation? If the answer is yes, the Secret Service really has to come out very strongly and articulate exactly what happened, why those text messages were missing. And again, it it, it also leads to a, a second order of consequence, which is 
were they in violation of the Federal Records Act? If you are going through a technology upgrade, you need to have safeguards that information that is critical in terms of preserving data and information is adhered to, and that is the law. Andrew, and again, I, I, I guess I should just point out again, we don't have all the response from the Secret Service, so with that caveat, does this make sense to you? No. It doesn't make sense at all. Uh, I think what Jonathan said is absolutely right. And let's let's remember here, back up one step. The Secret Service is an investigative organization. They don't just do protection for the president and other dignitaries. They investigate cases. And part of investigating cases, you have an obligation to preserve information, both good and bad, and turn that information over to defendants in the course of criminal prosecutions. You have discovery obligations. And text messages between agents come within the scope of those discovery obligations. So if this is a, a, a pattern or practice of routinely losing text messages, that is not consistent with the efficient and lawful running of an investigative organization. So there are many, many questions that need to be answered here. I agree with Jonathan that uh, uh, there's, there's a lot more that we don't know here. There may be some uh, non-nefarious uh, uh, answers to some of those questions, but boy, there's a lot of information we need. Right, Julia, I mean, the idea that messages are deleted as part of what's called a device replacement program after they were sought by oversight officials, again, if that is in fact the case, does that make sense to you? No. no. I mean, I, th I think it, it doesn't sound credible. So if there is a credible explanation, the Secret Service needs to provide it. This this sort of normal upgrade that they're talking about uh, would still retain your tax because they're part of government service and therefore retention purposes. Plus, I mean, let's be serious, Secret Service. You, you know what happened on January 6th, and this is going to be the moment in which you're not protecting the evidence that you know might be relevant. Also, I mean, there's there's also another problem here, which is, of course, the Department of Homeland Security also exists. It oversees the Secret Service. It really needs to get out in front of this. This is their component agency. And so the Secret Service is now, this is now the second or third time where the Secret Service simply says their story isn't true. The whoever's complaining, Cassidy, Hutchinson, whoever, uh, we know the truth. Well, that's not good enough anymore. I mean, this was an insurrection and they they serve, you know, they may have a, a, a job, a mission, but they actually take an oath of office to protect the Constitution. John Dean, I mean, if it does turn out that text messages were deleted intentionally for whatever reason, and the Secret Service strongly denies, but again, has not offered any real explanation here, do you think that creates any legal jeopardy for those involved? It certainly could if they intentionally did it, if there was some uh, nefarious reason that they did it. Anderson, I'd also put this in the context. This isn't the first time information from the Secret Service has gone missing on the 6th. The president's daily diary for that day has a seven-hour gap. The Secret Service is one of the principal entities that feeds the diarist that keeps the record uh, of the presidential record for that day. And apparently the Secret Service couldn't supply information about that day. So there's seven hours missing there, too. We've never had a good explanation of that. Uh, so this is a pattern, and it's troubling.